Have you ever been somewhere so aesthetically exquisite that it doesn't seem real? Almost like a waking dream. Well, my friends, this is one of those places. And I would have pinched myself black and blue had it not been for the brutally frozen wind whipping at my cheeks and the dizzying heights reminding me this is very real. Welcome back to the Yunnan province of China. The last time we left you, we boarded our first bullet train for a cross-country adventure like we have never embarked on before. And that's because, well, normally our preferred mode of travel is by sailboat. For those of you that have been around for a while, then you know that we are building a boat here in China and it is almost ready, but we had just a teeny bit more time and we thought we can't be here and not go explore some of this mysterious country to us. And hindsight being 2020, my only disappointment is not getting here sooner because this is the glorious ancient town of Lijiang. And nomads have been coming here for a thousand years because it's part of the ancient tea horse road. There are other entrances to the city, but this is the main entrance because of these water wheels and the intricate canal system that it feeds that runs all through and is like the life force of this ancient city. And what a life force it is. This might be the most beautiful city I have ever been in. It is stunningly breathtaking down every little cobblestone street and every little back way. There's just, there is no ugly side to the city, I don't think. I haven't been able to find it yet. And then of course, all this lovely water feeding through this city comes from an equally beautiful pond called Black Dragon. So coffee culture here in Yunnan is everywhere because most of the coffee beans that are grown in China are grown right here. And this is a typica from the region. And on the bag, it has all the roasting information you want to know, which is super awesome for us coffee nerds, because you know the elevation, you know the farmer, you know the roast, you know everything. So we are here in Yunnan, enjoying a Yunnan Tipica. And it's delicious. And the presentation, it's like everything you ever want out of a specialty coffee bar. Everything they do is not. Yeah, and the ambiance, just can't complain about it. All right, sit down and enjoy this with me. The water that runs through this ancient city is crystal clear, it's cool, it's so fresh. And that's because it comes from a glacier, which you can hike to. And we're all gonna go there right now. The sun is starting to come up. I know, we might get really lucky today. I was worried it was gonna be all shrouded in clouds, we wouldn't be able to see anything. But So now we're down at the base. It was a 45 minute ride to get here. And uh, yeah, we'll see what the day holds. We are in the clouds. We are. Oh. <laughs> we are above the clouds. It is beautiful. beautiful. It is just stunning and very cold. Very cold, like instant frostbite if you are not properly dressed up here. I don't know what the temperature is. I'll figure it out and put it on the screen. But it's cold. We're at 4,506 wow. meters right now, and we're gonna hike up to about 4,000. No, no, 5,000 five, something. No, 4,600 something. 5,000 is the peak. I have no idea. Uh, he's acclimated, clearly. Wow, very impressive. Yeah. Quick time lapse. See what that looks like. It's a little shaky, but the magnetic base comes in handy. 
<laughs> with all the rails. <laughs> Fingers are instantly chilly, even though I'm wearing gloves. <laughs> Beautiful though. <laughs> Don't look left. <laughs> ah, that's a put away expensive camera for sure. You can feel the uh, the altitude. You definitely feel restricted and breathing, and everything just feels like I've been running, <laughs> and I've not been running. Oh. They give you the uh, oxygen because they're so concerned about people having problems. And even as we were coming up, there was a guy coming down not looking good. So definitely take it serious. Going from zero to f over 4,000 meters is quite a change. So we made it to the top of Jade Dragon Snow Mountain and this is the glacier behind me that funnels down into the Black Dragon Pond with that beautiful vista. And from there, it's controlled through locks that then goes down into the city. So that old town, all the streams and all the waterways come from this glacier and snow melt. It's absolutely beautiful up here. And that's why all the water down there is so crystal clear and so beautiful. It's just beautiful. Should I say it one more time? Say it one more time. Beautiful. <laughs> 青春不会不死，永远的爱人，让流浪的足迹在荒漠里写下永久的回忆。飘去飘来的笔记是深藏的激情，你的心情。I'd like to snuggle that so bad. He's got like a bow in his hair, right here, and then a little necklace with pearls on it. <laughs> a well-loved Angora. Oh my goodness. They just love animals. Like, there are so many pets all throughout this city, all, all everywhere we go. Always, dogs and cats, and if there are cats out on the street, like you see people feeding them all the time. Like, they just love animals as much as we do. Yeah. You know, just consistent all the time. This place is probably most famously known for its tea. Mm -hmm. They grow black tea, they grow green tea, and they even grow a red tea that's then fermented. And looks look. like black tea. <laughs> exactly. And that's definitely what they're most famous for. And it's called pu'er tea. Mm -hmm. Tea in general is everywhere. The culture is alive. And it's in everything. They have every flavor of tea in an ice cream form. Or of course, tea wine. 
This is a pu'er tea tree. <laughs> These are local mushrooms cooked with pu'er tea and served with pieces of fried pu'er tea leaves. And it's so good. This is wine made from tea, specifically osmanthus tea, if I'm saying that right. Kind of like a liqueur, like a dessert liqueur, because they're very sweet. Apparently, they use tea to make art as well. Very good. Jasmine green tea. Oh, yeah. Want a bite? And that's really why this town exists, because of tea. Once upon a time, tea was more valuable than porcelain or silk. And pack animals and tea porters traversed thousands of miles across the harshest trails in Asia, because Tibet wanted tea and China desperately needed horses. And so, the tea horse rode and this town were born. People would carry anywhere from 150 to 300 pounds of tea on their backs, because naturally, the more you carried, the more you were paid. And in 1074, 130 pounds of tea would buy a horse. So Li Zheng and the Tea Horse Road were a vital thoroughfare of commercial and cultural trade between China and Tibet for centuries. I have spent hours walking around this city and I could spend another week doing that just because every street is so intriguing and every little corridor and every little turn, I mean, it's just like a maze of these cobblestone streets and these wooden structures that are just, they call you in. I mean, like a siren song, every tea shop. Oh, so beautiful. Oh my, look at that tea setup. Don't you want to have tea there? Every little woodworking shop, which brings me to the point of, they are known for more than just coffee and tea because there are woodworkers and leathermen and oh, what geez, else? Oh, artist, he's like making, carving, oh, he's carving a piece of yeah, wood right there. Holy yeah, cow. okay, here, we'll start. Uh, Well, I got distracted by something beautiful, which is all of the artistry that is in this tea shop. And we've been learning all about it thanks to a couple of Chinese people here who speak very good English because they used to live in Michigan and have been helping us out with the translations. But we've been learning all about how these teacups here, you see that? There's a metal base here that then is hand painted. So all these, each one is unique and it's actually a metal inside of it from Fujian, which is where our boat is being manufactured. So it ties back to our vessel, our home, mm -hmm. and this is going to go with us. Well, not this one specifically, she's yeah. just wrapped <laughs> she's up She's wrapping the up the ones that we've yeah. just purchased, but very cool because he said there's three unique types of metal that are only in the Fujian yeah. Yeah. province, and that is what creates the look. So it's a very special process. It's all hand done. So it is very much a, a work of art, a little tiny something that you can use every day. I love it, I'm so excited. It's like a little symbiotic thing that will live with us forever. So those, those are the kind of things we rarely purchase, but when we do, it's like, oh, that's just perfect. It's a perfect fit. Yeah, it's kind of like a practical thing as well. When you live on a boat, that's the only thing I feel like I can justify yeah. buying. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. Bye-bye. Nice to meet you. When we decided to come on this journey, we knew that we were going to the Yunnan province and that we were gonna end up in an ancient city and get to see something really cool. But what we had no idea is that we would be walking into a whole new culture. And that is the Nasi people and that is who started this city. One thing that really blows my mind though is the Nasi people have their own language and their own writing. And they are the only people in the world who still use hieroglyphs and it is called the Dongba script. We met this wonderful lady today at lunch and she stopped us and said, hello, in English, her English was perfect. And she goes, I am Nasi, and introduced herself. We told her that we went to Tiger, Tiger, Leaping, Gorge. Tiger Leaping Gorge, and she was like, that's my home. Well, like, that, turn, that's, that's where my people originated from. We were like, oh wow, that's so cool. Yeah, so it turns out that they're from this amazingly beautiful park 
Well, it's a park now called Tiger Leaping Gorge. Can't waste any time. We don't have any time. <laughs> Put the camera away. I gotta, I gotta hurry up, get down to the gorge, take my photo, and get back to the bus. <laughs> Whew, it is a beautiful day. Just cold enough down here and warm as heck up top in the sun. And now we're hiking through like this deserty scrub. It is totally unique, but it kind of feels like Arizona-ish, you know, in the mountains. It is beautiful. Well, we are now entering kind of the more foresty regions, just getting more green and leafy. As to where up top it was all, all the leaves were gone. So maybe it'll just get greener and greener as we get towards the bottom. That would be nice. I can imagine in spring or in summer that this would just be unbelievably gorgeous. This is just not the kind of place you want to try to do in a day. This, this is something I would like to spend at least a week here. At least to do it remotely justice. It's, uh, it's a bit painful. You just want to sit down and cry because you don't have enough time to take it all in. But it's only because we have so many other fabulous things on the horizon that we just can't stay. So first world problems. I gotcha. But man. It's kind of Grand Canyon meets like the gorge in Washington meets I don't even know what else. Very cool. So you think we've reached the ladder, huh? I think I think this is the ladder, and I'm not gonna lie, it looks a little sketchy. <laughs> not as grand as I pictured. No, they said ladder, and I was thinking like ladder. Like the North Carolina ones we did. Yeah, but oh, the Mesa Verde ladder. So they give you a choice. You can go up the ladder, she said it's 40 meters, or you can take the path if you don't like the look of the ladder. So you paid 15 for the first part, and we could just go back and we wouldn't pay anything else. But if you want to continue this part, they maintain this portion of the trail. So basically what you're doing is you're paying the locals their fee for their portion of the trail. And it's 15 is very inexpensive, so it's no big deal. And so it's nice because you feel like you're actually supporting the locals who made the trail. I'm all right with that. Even here in the middle of the national <laughs> park, <laughs> you pay by WeChat. <laughs> On we go. So we just scored lunch, got a couple of uh, roasted sweet potatoes. It's perfect. And they're still hot. That's great. Caramely. Fantastic. Man, it's so sweet. It's so sticky. <laughs> Check back up. We've only got an hour. Can you get to the very tippy top? So I put the camera away and hustle. Yeah. Woo! Bye bye. Bye bye. 
Almost there. <laughs> right. <laughs> we're halfway. No. We are from where we were down at the very bottom. Strip down. Sunglasses and take a layer off time. It is gonna be toasty. Oh, okay. <sighs> yeah, baby. All right, I'm not gonna lie. Living mostly at a sea level. I'm feeling it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We're at the ladder, and this is the kind of ladder that I was hoping for. <laughs> Slightly scary. Definitely nah. tall. Okay, here we go. What a day. What a day. What a life. Zero complaints. This is good. It's pretty crazy. That was legit scary. Yeah. Really? Same thing. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Yeah. I like that. That was a rush. <laughs> huh. Worth the ten you on. Oh my gosh. I'd pay it and I'd do it all over again if I had the time. The sun? No throwing. There's someone down there. <laughs> very practical advice. Especially when you're the uh, someone down there. Yeah. Wow. That was awesome. Ni hao. <laughs> it's beautiful. Hi. <laughs> Looks young. Ni hao. It's the end. Woo! Woohoo! We made it. I would do a celebration dance, but we literally have five minutes to get to the bus. So just a woohoo, yeah, yeah, uh huh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Looks like a cotton ball. Oh my gosh. I'm pretty sure the cat is like this big and the fur is this much. Oh, that one's interesting. I'll have to see what that one is. Um, yeah, so we got sucked in by the cat and now we're tasting all the wines. We've already for sure gone for one of the pu'er because it was so good. It's just so, I don't know how to describe that tea, but it is very kind of nutty and caramelly. So look, even Ted Lasso would like pu'er tea. True. Right? So true. <laughs> I always figured that tea was just going to taste like hot brown water. And you know what? I was right. Yeah, it's horrible. This one. Mm. So they're all made here in Lingjing, but he's saying that there's a couple that are kind of like their signatures. Obviously the pu'er is, and then which, which one? Tiva. Ah. Oh, purple rice one. Uh, it's not what I thought that was. <laughs> it tastes fruity. I don't know, they all taste fruity. The nice thing is, is these are pretty low alcohol. They're like 7% for most of these. So it's more just a fun, that's like a beverage at the end of the evening. It's a treat, it's like dessert. Here comes the trash man.
I don't know what this place is called, but we've been calling this old man coffee shop because every time we pass by, we're like, oh, that guy looks like he's got the best coffee. And he just looks cool in this shop with all of his little machinery. Anyway, Jason's been dying to come here. Oh, see, now I feel like I'm cheating you, getting the first taste. Okay, okay. <laughs> so he let me smell this one and it smells like earthy and dark and roasty. And then I was like, oh, no, no, no. And then I tasted it and it's like chocolate in a glass. It's like not chocolate milk, but like almost like a chocolate. Yeah, like and I asked him if it's flavored and he said, No, 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 it's natural. And of course it is. It doesn't look flavored, it doesn't smell flavored, but wow, it's really good. Deeply baked nuts, fruity aroma. Yeah. Ha ha ha. Yeah, 180 yuan for 350 grams. Yeah. Of course, Yunnan beans. <laughs> we told him we're like sure soon because that means vegetarian <laughs> he's like food vegetarian yes food vegetarian so now we are getting some tofu it smells so good and it's 12 you want i can smell in that spice that he has it's got that szechuan pepper in it which means it's going to give you that slight numbing effect Yummy, yummy. Ooh, that is piping hot. I'm gonna wait a second. I think I may be in trouble. Yeah. It's all so beautiful, and they're like in here stitching and working away, and you just, I don't know, I'm a sucker for handmade anything. I like and crafted things, small batch. I like watching them work. And I also don't own a handbag anymore. So, what do you think? Everybody vote, quick. Yeah, I, oh, I think I saw all of them. <laughs> it's like cocktails. But they're coming from the ceiling. <laughs> Every street is just so stinking cool. <sighs> I love it. I want to look at everything. I want to watch everybody work. It's so neat. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> This How beautiful. How beautiful, yes. It's the same as the, the one she's leaving right now. And this one has the, the, the Dungba script on it. Yes. Tapala. Yeah. It takes her two full days to make each one of these. Mm -hmm. And she is like the last grandma left in the village because she's actually a Nasi, so she grew up here. She's been here since she was a little girl. <laughs> I almost forgot when I first started to try to talk to her using my translator, it didn't work because she spoke Nasi. And so it was just gibberish coming through my app. So she had to call her granddaughter over and she was the one speaking Chinese into her translator. Anyway, communication, but we still made it work. It was very cool, but yeah, totally different language. She didn't speak Chinese. I feel like this place completely comes alive at night. It's like a totally different place. <laughs> Equally as beautiful. Equally as interesting. But completely different. The vibe is different. The scenery looks totally different. All the lighting, all the water, all the people. Oh my gosh. It's like a whole different world around here. And then of course, the shopping that we've been doing. I don't think we've shopped this much in years. No, it's normally just a chore to shop, and now it's like, you look left, you look right, and you're like, I wanna go there, I wanna go there, I wanna, I wanna buy that, that. so beautiful. And we're gonna get this, Let's and we're go, gonna get that. right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
So we've gotten way more from this trip than we ever expected. We got our nature. We had some solitude hiking all alone in the middle of the beautiful gorge. We've gotten a little bit of culture. We've learned about something completely new. Loved that. We have gotten scenery. I don't know. I feel like we've kind of hit it on all fronts on this yeah. one. So Yunnan has not disappointed. disappointed. No, not at all. Oh, and this little town. Look, I get it. It's touristy. They said the moment it became a UNESCO World Heritage Site, it like boomed. So that's been what? Good and 15, bad. 18 yeah, years, 20 something? years or something. Yeah. Anyway, so years. good and bad, but it's still the buildings, the streets, a lot of it is still the same. Still and a lot of Nazi people here that you get to meet and interact with, and it's just so unique. Yeah. So unique. Yeah. So some yeah. things are touristy for a reason, and I feel like. This is, is one of those things. So. If you find yourself in China, <laughs> it's totally worth it. If you just happen to find yourself yes. here. Yeah. And it's, oh God, it's such a wonderful place. It'll change your perspective on everything. Yeah, yeah. and I think we'll leave you on that. Yeah. So uh, next is... We're hopping on a plane and we're going to Hong Kong to buy boat parts because we can't get the certain boat parts in China. <laughs> nope. <laughs> there are downsides. There are. So we'll be there and then uh, and then we're moving aboard. Uh, oh yeah. That's Holy it. Cow. It's time, people. It's happening. So this was the last hoorah. Before a big hoorah. <gasps> Before the big hoorah. Okay. Oh Thanks so much for yeah. watching. Thanks for the support. Thanks yep. for being here guys. Yeah, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.